Welcome back to Monster Wars. There's much more action ahead, but first, you've seen him tear up the race course, and you've seen him in the pits, and you've frequently seen him in the winner's circle. Well, now he's going to take you on the road. 1992 world champion Fred Schaefer and his fiance Kathy invite you trucking, barefoot style. I'm on the road again. I can't, I can't wait, wait to get on the road again. Kathy's road trip begins 200 miles back down the highway in Pontoon Beach, Illinois. We pack our rig and head down the road about 45 weekends a year. It takes me about two hours to load the uh, alcohol and the oil and all the necessary things you need. Well, if I don't have it packed in here by now, I guess I don't need it. The hardest thing about going on the road is having to say goodbye to Ricky. You don't be good to the bear, sir? No, it's bye. So I'll be gone for a few days. When they were smaller, I used to take them with me. But uh, being two seven foot tall and weighs about 550 pounds now, he don't fit in the front seat too well anymore. And he don't like to sit there. <laughs> and he's really got a big appetite too. You give me a kiss, bye. Shug. Hey, give me a kiss. Come on. Shug. Shug. You all loaded and ready? We're ready. Traveling's fun. Uh, you know, some people take a vacation one or two weekends a year. We go 45 weekends a year. I really enjoy being on the road. It's kind of fun. You get to go any, you know, all over the United States, and you see things a lot of people never see. The first stop on the road is fueling time. This bear of a hauler holds over 200 gallons of gasoline. How many white strikes did you say it was from here to Pontiac? Can you count them that one time we went to Pontiac? It was like 300,486 white stripes on the highway, That's right? That's probably right. It was somewhere around there. 300,000, 800 something, something thousand. One of them white stripes from here to the highway. The average road trip would be about 500 miles, which is, uh, you know, about 10 hours driving time. It's real peaceful in here when you're on the road and the phone don't ring, and it's kind of nice to get away from it all and relax. Uh, she reads fan mail to me going down the road. You get a lot of, a lot of business taken care of and, and, and kind of chill out. I want a westbound 18-wheeler. Usually when we get on the CB radio and talk to some of the truck drivers, we're usually lost. And then that's when they want to talk to you. If you're a girl and you get on the CB, they just jump right on there and talk. Fred gets on there, they don't answer. But as soon as I pick it up and start talking, they all talk and tell us where we're going and how to get there. I'm going west on 70. Can someone tell me where the nearest rest area is? Home for the night. You ready to go to bed? Yep, I'm tired. Me too. Let's go to sleep. Boy, I'm hungry, Kevin. Let's get some breakfast. restaurants and our favorite breakfast diners when we're in route we we always stop at our favorites and i think that's part of the rules of the road or part of the tricks of the tricks of the trade you might call it well we're gonna have to hurry up and get on the road again your job is not boring every weekend you see new people a new city that keeps us Real exciting all the time because it, it's not the same old thing every day. Got to get you unfanned so you can kick butt this weekend, huh? Yeah, you got to get my neck ready for what it's going to go through. How many hours has it been, Kathy? We've been on the road for about 14 hours now. We're just about there. Another beautiful day just about to come to an end. On the road again. The long drive from Illinois to Anaheim, California. Was it worth it for the world champ? We'll find out 
Wayne Smolzanik is his competition in Tropical Thunder. Tropical Thunder qualified ninth. The world champ, Fred Schaefer in barefoot, was our fifth fastest qualifier. Tropical Thunder has never been able to beat barefoot. Is Wayne Smolzanik going to learn from his past mistakes? Is he getting lucky? We'll find out as they wait for the green light. On the start is Tropical Thunder with a great hole shot. What a leap! What a leap, and what's going on with the world champ? Tropical Thunder wins it. Barefoot is disqualified. USHRA rules require that both front tires hit the second ramp and go over the cars. Barefoot didn't do it. The replay will show. He comes up and sideways and does not hit the ramp with both front tires. Right here. He's out of there. And Wayne Smolzanik gets his first win of the year in Tropical Thunder against the world champ. A rough ride, but a win all the same. No doubt about it, Tropical Thunder is going to have to do better than this if he's going to move on in competition. He was lucky, but he took a very, very rough ride over the cars, bouncing all over the track. you got to get that thing under control. When Barefoot left the line, it was almost as if he realized he gave it too much power. It was too late, though. He could not back out of it and then get corrected before he hit that second line of cars. That's it for time round one. Time is time now for our next matchup between Carolina Crusher and Fred Schaefer Barefoot. Let's see if Schaefer learned anything after that first round loss. Now, Barefoot weighs in at 10,000 pounds, a little more, 10,050, 1,500 horses. Carolina Crusher, 10,000 on the nose, 1,400 horses. Does the horsepower advantage for Barefoot make any difference? Let's find out. On the start, Carolina Crusher with a hole shot, but now the big dog powers up. It's Barefoot, 4.60 seconds. Talk about learning from mistakes. Watch Fred Schaefer very lightly over the cars, and now he powers up and up across the finish line, high in the air. Carolina Crusher did get the hole shot, but he took that first jump too high. He's not lined up quite right when he approaches the second set of cars. Barefoot, your winner. He moves Fred on Schaefer's to the semi. average time has been 5.25 in Barefoot. Dennis Anderson's time in Gravedigger, 5.28. Three hundredths of a second separates these two guys and their fast average times on this track. Very fast indeed. Gravedigger and Barefoot. Staged and ready to go. Waiting for the green light in Anaheim. Digger with the hole shot. Barefoot has to fight to catch up. He can't do it. It's Digger. Gravedigger's in the finals as he smokes the world champ. You know, we thought Barefoot had this whole thing figured out, but he forgot to let off the gas a little bit. He nosedives over the first set of cars. That's all Dennis Anderson needed. You give this guy an inch, he's going to take a mile. Gravedigger's in the finals, folks. And Fred Schaefer did not perform the way he did in that second round. That nosedive not only cost him a race, that may have cost him a lot of neck problems, too. He took a heck of a bouncing on that one. Here's Jim with Digger. As they come up to stage for race number four, Taurus and Barefoot. Barefoot, the big dodge, qualified first and picked up 10 points for that effort. Taurus, driven by Jackie Wellman, was fifth in qualifying. The Dodge World Champion Barefoot and the former champion, Taurus. On the starting line, both trucks very even. Barefoot picks up a lead and takes it all the way. Barefoot, 4.66, Taurus, 4.91. The mighty monsters were even at the start, and then Barefoot starts to gain ground. He really turns it on and gets about a half-truck length lead over Taurus at the end. Finals, coming up to... Our next matchup pits the world champion, Fred Schaefer and his barefoot dodge against Jackie Wilman Jr. and Taurus. A rematch of round number one. But this sellout crowd came to see the monsters roar. Our matchup between barefoot and Taurus about to begin. They stage, wait for the green light. There it is. Barefoot with a great hole shot, but he goes sideways. Oh no, barefoot left the track. He's disqualified, and Taurus picks up the win and moves to semifinal action. Your winner is Taurus! Big lead had to back off before he finished the race, so he didn't run into Tropical Thunder's rear. 
Action continues at the U.S. Hot Rod Association's Monster Wars. This is Creo style in New Orleans. This matchup pits Barefoot and Invader. Invader driven by Ray Perkowski, he qualified eighth. Barefoot with Fred Schaefer aboard was our third fastest qualifier. He gets seven points for his effort. Barefoot is the big dodge, Invader the Ford. Off the line. Now look at this. Barefoot opens up a lead early on. Invader has to struggle from behind. Fred Schaefer has Barefoot just dialed in on this. He goes into the final turn. It is all Barefoot. A full four-second lead for Barefoot over Invader. It was almost as if Fred Schaefer had built this track. He knows it by heart. It takes Barefoot into the first set of cards, over those, and then into the turn. Ray Perkowski was not as lucky with Invader. He misjudged a turn, had it back out of it, cost him a lot of time. Jim Davidson is with our winner, Fred Schaefer of Barefoot. Fred, a nice run against Invader, a good victory. Tell me about being down here in New Orleans in the roundy round track. Uh, thank you, Jim. Well, you know, on a roundy round track like that, uh, me running the only dry block out here on the series, uh, we have to be real concerned on how long the run takes and how much time we have between rounds. So uh, that's one of the cautionary things we have to do. Tell me about the track. Is this a more difficult roundy round? Yeah, it is. It's a little bit longer track than we usually run, and uh, a lot more heat gets built there and generated. And uh, the guy like Ray Pukowski, he's getting real, be a real aggressive driver anyway So uh, with the Invader, so we got to really watch him close. Is the Barefoot going to be able to withstand the heat throughout the night? Uh, this is one of our first long tracks like this. We're going to see what happens between rounds. Pulling up to the starting line, the world champion Barefoot. Fred Schaefer, the veteran pilot's barefoot, and he'll be going against Tropical Thunder. Wayne Smozanek out of Jupiter, Florida. Now, Smozanek has a tough road to hoe against the world champion. Barefoot qualified fourth, while Tropical Thunder turned in ninth in qualifying. Of course, he'd like to have a win, but if that's not possible, he wants to turn in the very best time. As we move on to round two, we bring back all five winners, plus the three fastest losers from round number one. Smozanic puts on a very important piece of equipment there. That's the neck brace. These guys get bounced around a lot, and they all wear a neck brace in competition. We are set and waiting for the green light, and there goes Barefoot. What happened to Tropical Thunder? Fred Schaefer... He's already into the turn, and Thunder hasn't moved yet. He's around, he's heading to home, and now Tropical Thunder starts. What did he think, this was a relay race? What is going on with Tropical Thunder? He sat there for a full four or five seconds before he even started, and now he takes his time. He doesn't seem to have any power at all. He just sort of walks across the set of cars, finishes the race, but my gosh. Look, 32 seconds? Tropical Thunder just didn't have it. So he's got lots of problems. I don't know what they are. We'll see if we can find out later. But Barefoot gets the win. He will definitely move on. And unless something drastic happens in the next few races, I think we've seen the last of Tropical Thunder in the Houston Astrodome. He will take the invader against the world champion, Barefoot. Barefoot piloted by Fred Schaefer, the truck, 10,000 pounds, with a Keith Black Hemi to power it with 1,500 horses. The 11,000-pound, much heavier Invader has 1,300 horses, powered by a Chevy, to get it across that finish line. Can he do it? We'll find out. The Invader takes on the world champion barefoot here in Monster Wars, the Houston Astrodome. This is definitely going to be a showdown. Barefoot has that preferred right-hand lane with the left turn. They stage, they go. Barefoot gets an entire almost one-second hole shot over Invader. Did Invader have problems, or was he sleeping? Into the turn. Barefoot's already around. Invader's just approaching it. Barefoot wins it. Bear wall, look out. Barefoot almost loses it. After the finish, Barefoot almost turns it on its side. Fred Schaefer saves it. He waves to the crowd. Look at this turn. He's in here. He's heading for home. Maybe a little oversteering, but he is across the finish line. And now comes the problem. Look out, Fred. Barefoot's on all fours again. 
Fred, a great job going up against the invader. But almost cost you there in that hairpin turn. You almost turned it over. Yeah, thank you. When you're going around those corners like that, what you try and do is get as straight as you can and accelerate. I wasn't quite straight. The truck landed. I had to steer out of it. It was a close call. Well, it was a good job of driving. Now, coming out of that, any damage to the truck? Uh, not that I know of. In the semis, you're really going to crank it up. And crank it up, they do. Here comes Barefoot, the world champion. He's drawn the dreaded left-hand lane, the lane that has the gremlins that's caused problems for everybody that's been there so far in this matchup. Can he take out Taurus? Can he defeat those left-hand gremlins? We'll find out. Jackie Wilman takes Taurus around, and Fred Schaefer has problems in Barefoot. He cannot get the truck to start. He's calling over help. He's going to go down and take a look for himself. We have one, two tow trucks there trying to get the world champion ready for this event. Torres sits on the line. He waits for barefoot. Fred has to come down to see if he can get something going in this truck. One has to wonder if that earlier race against Invader caused the problems when Fred Schaefer came across the finish line and then almost lost it. The truck on its side and then pulls back around, all that bouncing around, that would cause problems in anybody's truck. And Torrance will have to face another challenger. Barefoot's not coming back. And there goes Barefoot. He's being pulled out, and in comes the Invader. Invader, Ray Perkowski. Pieces. There's pieces of Digger everywhere. He will not be back to race today. He wasn't the only one that had a tough time. The world champion Fred Schaefer takes Barefoot over the cars. And now his launch. Look at that. 25 feet in the air, and he's landing sideways. The Dodge, 10,050 pounds with 1,500 horses. And now they're lined up. Only one of these trucks will move on. The other one gets loaded on the trailer, according to USHRA rules. Barefoot with a hole shot. Predator does a wheelie, but Barefoot wins it. Predator, the rear tires dug in. It took him up in a wheelie form. Barefoot just sailed over the cars. Predator really had to do a great job of driving to save the truck here. He literally defies gravity when he lands and goes sideways. He's all over the place. Barefoot, off the start. Not a bad one. He landed a little rough, but then he manages to recover and goes over the cars and moves on to round number two. Speak. All right. Who will meet Carolina Crusher in the finals? Will it be Invader or will it be Barefoot? These two trucks have met five times this year. Invader has not yet won against Barefoot. Average time for Barefoot, 5.09. Average time for Invader, 5.63 on this track. And now all the talking is over with. It's the Barefoot Invaders Showdown. They come up to the line. The yellow Ford against the big red Dodge. The green light. And there they go. Barefoot with a hole shot. Easily handles Invader. Invader may have some breakage, may have some problems. Barefoot took a pounding when he landed. On the replay, it's very easy to see the beating both these trucks are taking. Invader seems to have problems now. And then, going over the last set of cars, Barefoot hits the top of the last car and slides off. He may be injured. This crowd is ready for a final, and a final between Crusher and Barefoot is set with Monster Wars. Monster Ward. story unfolding right now at the Minneapolis Metrodome. Barefoot and Carolina Crusher were scheduled to compete in the finals. But both trucks, that's right, both trucks developed engine trouble and have just been towed away from the starting line. A bad break for both Fred Schaefer and Gary Porter. But it's good news for Taurus and Equalizer. Luck's with them. Competition continues this matchup between UFO and Barefoot. UFO is piloted by Bob Fisher. He qualified third. Fred Schaefer, the world champion of Barefoot, qualified a disappointing eighth. But it's racing action we're looking for now in Nassau. And Bob Fisher drives the Ford. The Barefoot is a Dodge. Dodge-Ford matchup waiting for the green light. It's showtime. Off the line. Barefoot gets it. 
spear foot actually seemed to go faster in the air. 3.21 seconds, a full tenth of a second ahead of UFO. Barefoot, this truck is the one to beat this year. He went high, but actually seemed to go faster. I'm not sure what happened. I think when he approached the cars, he picked up some torque. Round number two, race number three here at Nassau Coliseum. This one will pit barefoot against Carolina Crusher. They're staged and let's go racing. Off the line, it's Carolina Crusher. It's all Carolina Crusher. He takes out Barefoot. The margin of victory, three tenths of a second. And all Barefoot has is a bad dream of that race. It was one on the line. You know, Gary Porter told us earlier in the show, his truck is set up for short course straight line racing. He did it there. Another few feet and Barefoot would have caught him. They come out to stage for our fifth and final race of round number one. Tropical Thunder, Wayne Smozanic, first in qualifying, goes against the world champion, Fred Schaefer's Barefoot. Barefoot qualified sixth. So Tropical Thunder may get to take out the world champion in the first round if he can continue the intensity of that qualifying round. Barefoot, Tropical Thunder staged on the start. The ex-drag racer Fred Schaefer gets a hole shot. Tropical Thunder takes it easy. Barefoot already in the turn. The big dodge building a lead up against Tropical Thunder. Wayne Smolzanek is definitely going to have to show us something to try to take out the world champion. There's no way. Barefoot wins it. Barefoot wins it. And Tropical Thunder is still running his race. Barefoot just sits on the track waiting for the race to be over. Your winner, Fred Schaefer in the Barefoot Dodge. Tropical Thunder did great in qualifying today, but then in competition, well, something happened. It could be power problems, or it could just be lack of experience. After all, Barefoot and Fred Schaefer have been around 15 years, as opposed to Tropical Thunder's three. That's the world champion Barefoot, the most powerful truck on the Monster Super Series, goes up against Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger. You're looking at the truck that has the distinction of being the truck that has the most red lights on the U.S. Hot Rod Super Series, Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger, but also the fan favorite going up against the world champion Barefoot. On the start, they're evenly matched. These trucks have met three times head-to-head -head this year. Barefoot has won all threes, trying to make it four in a row. But Gravedigger's given up no space at all as they go into the final turn. This is going to be a close one. Digger and Barefoot, and Barefoot wins it. He edges it out. Barefoot defeats Gravedigger by less than a half second. Going into the turn, they were evenly matched. Dennis Anderson takes Grave Digger wide. Fred Schaefer has Barefoot lined up perfectly as they go to the final jump. And then, Digger jumps high. Barefoot stays low for the win. And who's going to go against Grave Digger in the finals? It could be Carolina Crusher, or it could be the Dodge Barefoot, the world champion. Barefoot with Fred Schaefer aboard, weighs in at 10,050 pounds, 1,500 horsepower, Keith Black Hemi, the power plant. 10,000 pounds for Carolina Crusher, the Rodec 557, 1,400 horsepower. Both trucks very capable of defeating the other. We've seen them face each other five times this year. Carolina Crusher has won two, Barefoot three. On the start, Barefoot goes high. Carolina Crusher stays low. Going into the turn, Barefoot swings it around. He's heading back and into it. Barefoot a little out of shape. Carolina Crusher goes into the turn. Barefoot has to do a lot of steering. Carolina Crusher is going to be neck and neck. Whoa, what a race! And Carolina Crusher wins it by six hundredths of a second. The world champion Barefoot is a truck that normally handles these turning courses very well. And Carolina Crusher, well, you heard Gary Porter himself say it's not his big thing. But a problem on the landing causes Barefoot some time. He has to back out of it, and Carolina Crusher seizes the opportunity. Crusher will face Digger in the final. First of all, the truck has to be able to accelerate. Secondly, the driver will be able to maneuver properly. Dennis Anderson to Gravedigger to fourth in qualifying. Fred Schaefer took Barefoot to ninth.
This is our Monster Wars Invitational Challenge. Tread to Tread Barefoot has taken out Grave Digger once on the season. Dennis Anderson of the Grave Digger tells us what it takes to win. It's going to be a real fast straightaway. Brakes will be hot coming into the turn. And we get squared away in the turn and just nail it and jump the cars, you know. And uh, I just got to keep an eye on old Fred over there. It's, I mean, I'm going to run my race. He's going to run his. But the old Dodge runs good. I got to give him credit. But this old 1950 Chevy will beat his door down. If confidence has anything to do with it, he could do it. Side by side, they go around. And up and over and into the turn. And oh! Oh, the Grave Digger rolls! Barefoot has some problems on the turn, but Grave Digger rolls! Barefoot goes on to win it! Grave Digger rolls! Dennis Anderson is on his roof! The time for Barefoot, 18.72. Grave Digger looks great. Ejected, Jack Wilman Sr. goes to the pits in Taurus. Our next matchup pits Barefoot and Carolina Crusher, but they have to work on Barefoot. The whole crew is under there, including Ray Perkowski from Invader. Fred Schaefer, his crew chief, and Ray Perkowski. Apparently, there's transmission problems, and the question is, can they get it ready in time to face Gary Porter and Carolina Crusher? Talk about what does it back get clock. fixed? He's set to go against Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. Barefoot, the big Keith Black Hemi Power Dodge, putting out 1,500 horses, and Gary Porter's Crusher, the big 557 Rodak, has 1,400. Gary Porter tells us what it takes to win in Pontiac. In order to beat Barefoot here at Pontiac, I'm going to have to watch the light really close, try to get a whole shot on him, try to make plenty of power going down the front straight away, stay into the throttle as long as I can, and then get hard on the brakes. I'm going to have to make the perfect turn and then get back into it full bore again to get the jump over the cars because running against Fred Schaefer, there's no room for mistakes. We have certainly seen our share of mistakes here as everybody has problems on the turn. And up and around goes Gary Porter and Fred Schaefer. Barefoot and Carolina Crusher. Barefoot uses the extra 100 horsepower to win. 9.13 seconds. That's a record for this track. Barefoot. He just didn't back out of it until the final moment. Then shuts it down. Maneuvers around that turn very, very, very quickly. And now it's time to power up and go for the win. He pulls away from Carolina Crusher. Barefoot's moving on to the semifinals. Fred Schaefer certainly knows how to maneuver that truck. What a great job of driving, Fred. Maybe that's why he's the world Barefoot champion. Barefoot looks at step all over each other. Everyone wants to beat Barefoot. Fred Schaefer, the reigning world champion, is one of the most experienced drivers on the circuit. He's as tough as a grizzly on the race course, but when he's not competing, friendly Fred's as lovable as a teddy bear. I love the race. Go fast, fly high. 1992 U.S. Hot Rod Association's world champion, Fred Schaefer, is a force to be reckoned with. Owner and driver of Barefoot, he's on the ground to make monster truck history. I'm the only two-time champion out there. My goal is, is to be the only three-time champion. I guess I'm one of the older, experienced drivers, and I've been around for quite some time. Maybe it shows in my experience because uh, winning the championship in 1992 tells me that my reflexes are still not that bad. Maintaining my body's like maintaining my truck. I feel I can take a beating if I have to. I don't feel like I'm 45. I feel like I'm about 20. A healthy mind is as important to Fred as staying in shape. He keeps busy as a national spokesperson for drug prevention. I got a message for all the kids out there. Give your dreams a chance to grow. Just say no. OK, let's put the bucket down. Let's throw it right here. I think I'm the only monster truck uh, driver out there. Maybe it's got four grandkids. And come and get it. This is home here when you come home, take care of the animals and, uh, and play with the grandkids and the animals at the same time. This is like a vacation. An animal lover all his life, Schaefer lives on 10 acres of land in Pontoon Beach, Illinois, large enough to maintain a small zoo. In fact, his truck is actually named after two of his favorite zoo pets, Sugar and Spice. I say I walk them on a leash, but usually they walk me. He's seven foot tall, and he weighs about 550 now. He's real gentle. Let's show the kids how big the black bear is. You got me all dirty. Let's show them how big Spice is. No. You don't pull the arm down now. <laughs> Like his bears, Schaefer has a soft and cuddly side, warm and good-natured. But on the track, he 
becomes a ferocious animal ready to devour anyone who gets in his way. Fred Schaefer will be taking on Bigfoot in just a few moments. seconds, Andy Branson, Bigfoot, an average time of 9.44 seconds. This is not just a race to see who goes to the finals. This is for pride. And if anybody knows what it takes to beat Bigfoot, it's Fred Schaefer, and he tells us what he has to do. Okay, this is what it's going to take for me to beat Bigfoot. Uh, when you come off the line there, you've got a good straightaway, and you've got to get a lot of speed up. If you hit the corner too fast, you're going to get on two wheels. You're going to have to let off of it, or you're going to get around that corner just right. Uh, he qualified real well here today. He I think he qualified number one. So what we got to do is do everything right on this corner to get around that corner and let that horsepower work. They are staged. Green light. Barefoot gets a whole shot. Got some very good light. Bigfoot up and around. Barefoot. Oh, he went over. He went over on those two tires. He's out of shape. He's out of it. Bigfoot wins it. Bigfoot wins it. 9.33 seconds. He takes out Barefoot. You know, Fred Schaefer should have kept his mouth shut. It was almost like the kiss of death in that pre-race interview when he told us what could happen, because that's exactly what did happen. On the turn, he came in too tight. The wheels came up. He's out of shape. Can straighten up. Misses the cars entirely and loses it. They're lined up for race number two of round number one. First Blood, Rob Fuchs doing the piloting aboard the seventh qualifying First Blood. And the world champion, Barefoot, is driven by Fred Schaefer. He qualified second. First Blood, the big Ford edges up to the starting line as the U.S. Hot Rod officials bring him up. He is just about staged. And the world champion, Barefoot, eyeballs the competition. Fred Schaefer wants to check out all the safety systems to make sure everything is all right. Let's check the inside of the truck. He looks like he's ready. The green light will signify the go. There they go. First blood and barefoot, and barefoot opens up the lead. Barefoot takes out first blood. The world champion, barefoot, does it again. He waves to the crowd, and this is how it happens. Side by side, Barefoot turns it on and opens up the lead. This truck not only has the power, it has the incredible suspension needed for a course like this. A lot of hills, but he smooths it out quickly. Wayne's dream right now? Take Tropical Thunder to the winner's circle and take out the world champion, Barefoot. One of these two trucks is going to the semifinals to take on Taurus. Barefoot and Tropical Thunder, the Gator Bowl, Jacksonville, Florida. This is the showdown. They bring Tropical Thunder up to the starting line and then say, let's try it again. Everybody wants to be very sure they don't red light. We've seen that happen twice before. Barefoot is staged. Fred Schaefer strapped in. We're ready. Off they go. Barefoot takes out Tropical Thunder. Barefoot just running better than ever. The world champion Barefoot has that thing won from the very start. Not a turn of the tires was unneeded on this win. No loose dirt, no loose throwing around on the track. This guy was gone. The rocket ship we call Barefoot is in the semifinals. He's going to take on Taurus. He made easy work of Tropical Thunder, and Fred Schaefer is back with Jim. Fred, you're really tearing it up out there. You just put Tropical Thunder away. He had some problems over the first set of cars, but a good run for you. Yeah, uh, Tropical Thunder, he's one of the newer trucks out there, and uh, Jim, he's wanting to beat some of the guys that's been around for a long time like me, and he tried real hard, and I think he had just a little driver error there in the second set. Well, you know, he's going ahead, and he's covering up that little suspension he's got under there. He's trying not to give away his secrets. You're one of the masters of the suspension. The suspension here on this barefoot, you get a lot of front end movement. Maybe you could give him a few pointers. Yeah, thank you, Jim. I think uh, I think he's still learning, and we're all learning. And uh, as we go along, we'll we'll see how that progresses. Face equalizer in the finals. It could be Taurus, but first he's got to get past the world champion barefoot. Jim Davidson caught up with Jackie right before the race. Jackie, you've been spending a lot of time working on the truck in between rounds here. It seems as though, what, a cracked frame first? 
Yeah, the frame was broken first, and then uh, I broke some back shock bolts, and then the last time my oil pump was broke, so I've had a little bit of trouble all night. But. Well, tell me how the engine's running. You got that new McGee in there. You've been running it in 1993. Is it going well so far? Well, it's not running real good tonight. Uh, the air is a little different and stuff, and it acts like the motor's too fat on fuel, so we leaned it way down, and we're just going to give it our best shot. Sounds like nothing but problems for Torrance, and he's going up against the world champion Barefoot. He's got to be concerned. The problem-plagued Taurus prepares to go against the world champion Barefoot. Taurus, average time, 3.79 seconds. Barefoot, 3.67. A short but tough course here at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. They are lined up. The green light will give them the go, and it's showtime. Barefoot and Taurus and Barefoot! Wheelie! Wheelie! Three quarters of the track! Barefoot! I don't know if he was showing off or if he was just excited and went for the win, but he won it on two wheels! Over the line! In the air! Look at this! Woo! High flying Barefoot is in the finals against Equalizer! Taurus! He had a good run, but nothing to compare to the world champion. He's going to have to wait to another more lucky day to take out Barefoot. Tonight, it's Barefoot and Equalizer in our finals. The picture tells the story. Fred, the semis against Taurus, and you're doing a little showboat, and I don't know if you did it on purpose, but a little wheelie there in between, kind of a nifty move. Uh, Jim uh, really wasn't on purpose. Uh, Torres is a real tough competitor, and as you know, when I come over with that first set of cars, I put it right to the floor and uh, sit back and let that Dodge motor do the work and the thing wheel standing on me. I knew I couldn't let off. I just kept my foot in it. You don't let off again people like Torres, and just luckily we came out real good over the second set of cars, and it was a real good run. They are lined Both. up and ready to go. Barefoot and Equalizer. How did Barefoot get here? Well, he had to do a lot of work. He took out first blood in round number one, Tropical Thunder in number two, and defeated Taurus in the semis. Equalizer. He went against Kodiak in round number one and came out on top, then Predator in number two, and took out the Invader in the semifinals. And now it's down to these two trucks. We started with 10, we've brought them down to two, and in just a few moments, we'll find out who's going to reign victorious, number one in Jacksonville, Florida. Barefoot and Equalizer. Both trucks are staged waiting for the green light. It is showtime! It's Equalizer off the line. Barefoot battles back! Who won it? Side by side, they go across the finish line. We've seen close matchups here tonight, but this final was something. I'm going to have to see the replay. On the finish line, barefoot. Barefoot may have had him by inches. Equalizer with that lead right on the early start. Barefoot battles back, and yes, barefoot is first across the line. Barefoot gets the win. A tough break for it is Equalizer. With the world champ. Craig, congratulations. I know you're living under the philosophy you can never have too many crowns to your name, but here you are. You won another one. We're in Jacksonville. You're once again champion. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, David Morris, Equalizer, uh, he's one of the toughest competitors we got out there, and I, re I really didn't know who was going to win this thing. I just uh, give it everything I got. Well, tell me about that run. You really did mash it the whole way through. When I came over that first set of cars, I tried to be on the light and come over that first set of cars, and, and we got just a little bit of bounce to the front end, and when I hit that throttle, the thing just stood on the rear wheels and just kept going, and I knew I couldn't let off. You can't let off again a guy like David Morris. That's it. And uh, we hit the second set of cars nice and square, and it came right out on, on the front end and just landed perfect. Where are all these wheelies coming out of? It's that horsepower and that Dodge motor. I'm, I'm getting used to all that power now, and I can put that pedal to the floor now. It's working out real well. I just think you're a little adrenaline pumped. Thanks, Jim. I am. Big win for Fred Sh
Fred Schaefer, the world champion barefoot dodge, goes up against Invader. Ray Perkowski took Invader to sixth in qualifying. The world champ, Fred Schaefer, barefoot first in qualifying the fastest truck here in Louisville. Invader and Barefoot, a four dodge matchup. The green light signifies the go, and Barefoot with a slight hole shot. He's on the inside lane coming into this first turn. Invader falls behind. He's going to have to catch up. And the world champion is showing us how to drive. Cuts it very, very close in the inside lane. And now over the cars, a great leap. We've seen the other trucks break when they do that. Invader leaps and he's still in the ball game. Both trucks running well. Just fabulous racing. Barefoot in the lead. Invader coming from behind, but it may be too late to catch the world champ. He's up and over. Barefoot wins it. 37 seconds flat, the fastest time we've seen in Louisville. Invader couldn't catch the world champ. So it's going to take a lot to beat Brent Schaefer and Barefoot here in this course in Louisville. If things can hold together for this guy, he may take it all the way. Everybody else has breakage problems on a jump like this. Barefoot seems to thrive on it. And let's not count Invader out. He'll come back as a fast loser. Great monster. And round two, the former world champion equalizer and the reigning world champ, Barefoot. Barefoot, a brand new truck weighing in at 10,000 plus pounds, 1,500 horses powered by Dodge. The equalizer is a 1989 design. It's Chevrolet all the way. We'll view this race through the eyes of David Morris. And now Barefoot opens up a lead. David Morris inside the equalizer getting a rough ride on the outside lane. We can see Barefoot opening up that lead. David Morris battles to try to catch up to him. Barefoot leaps in the air. Whoa, a tough landing for equalizer. And now he's on the inside lane trying to catch the taillights of Barefoot. But it's too late. Equalizer can't do it. Barefoot is already over the finish line. Barefoot wins. He's in the finals. And Equalizer has lots of problems. Equalizer breaks at the end. There's smoke coming out of the engine. Barefoot wins it. Barefoot moves on to the finals here in Louisville. Barefoot up and over. Equalizer coming over, and if you think it's hard landing on dirt week in and week out, this week these guys are landing on concrete. Barefoot just getting stronger and stronger, and Equalizer fading away. David Morris outside the Barefoot Equalizer. And both these trucks got here in a strange sort of way. Barefoot lost to Invader in round one, got a bye in round two, and then took out Equalizer in round three. Carolina Crusher lost to Gravedigger in round one, defeated Kodiak in two, and took out Digger in three. But now, all that's past them. It's one more truck to go to be the champion. Barefoot and Crusher line up and go! And going into the first turn, Barefoot picks up a little bit of a lead. Carolina Crusher hangs right with him. He's on the outside lane. He's got further to go. And then when they cross over, he'll have the inside track. Up and over for Barefoot. Carolina Crusher right behind. And now Crusher pours on the speed. Barefoot finds something from deep within him. And he opens up the lead. Barefoot is going to take this win. Carolina Crusher battles, but he can't do it. It's Barefoot. Barefoot wins it in Louisville. Barefoot, your winner over Carolina Crusher. What a devastating loss for Carolina Crusher. Barefoot was in control from the very start. Going over the first set of cars, it was all barefoot and then a perfect landing. Where others have been thrown all over the course, he stayed the course and is our champ. With our champ right now is Jim Davidson. Fred Schaefer, congratulations. A great run here in the finals. Louisville was kinder to you than it was to others. Tell me about that run against Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. Okay, uh, what I tried to do with this Carolina Crusher there, he's a real tough character. Um, I lined up and tried to get out in front of him on the first turn there and get a good lead on him, and hopefully that would rally him a little bit and uh, try to stay out front so uh, that he could see me in front and hopefully he would, uh, it would rattle him a little bit. From my perspective, you had no problems on that run. Uh, 
No, no, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I thought it was going to get a little squirrely on the outside when I changed the right lane on the, on the top there, but uh, not too bad. Well, Fred, congratulations. You did a great job. Thank you. All right. Keeps thanks. on coming. Barefoot and Tropical Thunder line up on the X in Louisville. Barefoot is driven by Fred Schaefer. He's the reigning world champion. Wayne Smozanica from Florida drives Tropical Thunder. And Look at this, Barefoot qualified 10th. A lot of people going, oh, what's wrong with Barefoot? Maybe Fred's the smarter of the group. He knows this is a tough course. It's very, very tough on the truck when they land. He may have been playing possum. The question is, is Tropical Thunder up to the challenge of Barefoot? On the start, Barefoot takes the big Hemi engine and powers out. Tropical Thunder plays catch up. He's got to stay on the track. Thunder cut that very, very close. Oh, he does it again! He does it again! He's on the infield! It's throwing them all over the place! Over the cars goes barefoot. Tropical Thunder decides to go around. And Fred Schaefer is out for a picnic walk in the park on his win. Barefoot comes around and heads for home. Oh, no, look out! Barefoot almost turned it on its side, but he goes home, pulls it out, and the veteran gets the win a full nine seconds over Tropical Thunder. Where did Tropical Thunder's problems occur? Right in turn number two. Wayne Smolzana cut it too close, got up in the concrete abutments and threw him all over the place. Probably did some front end damage. Here's Fred Schaefer, guy, meanwhile, the starting line. Fred Schaefer, driver of Barefoot. He's got his work cut out for him, though, as he goes against Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. Barefoot could get crushed. Who's going to go to the semifinals? Will it be Carolina Crusher or Barefoot? Now, for this race, we've done something a little special. We've put a Monster Wars camera on the front of Carolina Crusher. You're actually going to see what the driver sees as you go for a ride inside the big monsters. We are lined up in Louisville. The official gets out of the way. Wait for the green light and showtime. Barefoot and Crusher, here we go. A puff of smoke out of Carolina Crusher. Barefoot and Crusher side by side. They go into turn number one. This is really evenly matched. And now into turn number two. Carolina Crusher falling a little behind. He's on the outside lane. Fred Schaefer, you can see Barefoot going to the jump. This is the view Gary Porter has. Barefoot, he turns it on. Carolina Crusher has to play catch up. He does a good job of it. Carolina Crusher takes the lead. And the win goes to Gary Porter. Crusher smoking. He gets the win four hundredths of a second over Barefoot. On the replay, we can see the great job of driving Gary Porter does. He was on the outside lane, but now it's inside. He drives very, very close. He cuts it close. He really has control of this truck, working that front and rear steer, and takes it home for the win. Gary Porter, he's going to the semifinals. Barefoot heads home, and we head to the studio. Line up. The this is the Ford Chevy matchup with First Blood going against Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. Barefoot qualified fourth. First Blood, Rob Fuchs aboard, qualified ninth. The points are very, very close this year. If Barefoot can have a good day, given the problems that Gravedigger had earlier, he may overtake Gravedigger in point standings today. On the start, First Blood with a hole shot. Barefoot battles back, going into the turn. First Blood cuts it very, very close. Barefoot has to battle from behind as they come around and head for the cars for the first time. It's First Blood in the lead. Barefoot battling back. They go over the cars. Both bobble just a little bit. And now First Blood's on the outside. Cuts it very, very tight. Look out. Oh, he hit Barefoot. First Blood hit Barefoot. The world champ holds on. Can he make it? Can he keep running? Yes. Barefoot wins it. First Blood hit him, and Barefoot still held on to take the win. An incredible race. Your winner's Barefoot. A tough break for First Blood. First Blood crossed the line and hit Barefoot. Jim Davidson's with First Blood's Rob Pukes. Rob, there's a whole lot of bumping going on out there. Yeah, there sure was. Uh, Fred and I kind of hit out there. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't real. Was it a little bit as though you thought he was coming into your lane? I don't know who actually was in whose lane. Uh, my front tire hit his back tire, and you know, there was really no damage done. Better wheel, but that's about it. Okay, make the call. Intentional or unintentional? <laughs> I'd have to say Lord. unintentional. As the action continues, Invader and Barefoot. A very quick start. Both trucks running extremely well. A Ford Dodge matchup. 
Invader on the inside. Barefoot's going to have to go some to catch him. Ray Burkowski doing a super job of driving. Over the cars they go. And now Barefoot overtakes them. A little bobble for Barefoot, but he holds on to this asphalt. Invader's in the wall. Invader could not make the turn. He took to the wall. It is all Barefoot, the world champion, showing us why he is two-time world champion and now heading for a third. Racks up more points and closes the gap between he and Gravedigger. I told you this course was very, very tough. Their landing on asphalt is getting slippery because of the heat. Invader could not make the turn. He had a great run going for him, and then he slides into the wall. He has no choice but to shut the thing down and sit and watch barefoot as he goes on to victory. And now let's go back to Luan and Monster and this Control. Matchup, a rematch of round number one between the world champion Barefoot and Rob Fuchs' first blood. First blood weighing in at 10,000 pounds, Ford powered, putting out 1,400 horses. The world champion Barefoot is a Dodge with a Keith Black Hemi powered 1,500 horses. They're lined up, staged, and ready to go. Inside first blood. Rob Fuchs gets the green light. You can see the incredible power as the truck literally leans up. He shifts and now comes around. Where's he going? First Blood is out of there. First Blood's all over the track. He has suspension problems. The entire front linkage gave way and Barefoot is taking this one, folks. First Blood tries to battle back, but he can't even stay on the track as the big Dodge is going to take it on to the finals. He backs off a little bit. No sense in destroying your equipment when you don't have to. And Barefoot, the big Dodge, wins it over First Blood. First Blood has not been able to overtake Barefoot all year long. We have reached the finals, the final showdown. And this is why they call this Monster Wars, folks. These two trucks, Carolina Crusher and Barefoot, have met nine times this season. Barefoot's won five, Carolina Crusher four. And Gary Porter would like to even it out right now. The Barefoot crew stone faced as they watch Fred Schaefer pull up to the line. How did Barefoot get here? He took out First Blood in round number one, then Invader in number two, and First Blood again in the semis. Carolina Crusher took out Equalizer, then Taurus in round number two, and took out Equalizer again in the semis. All right, I'm there. Come on, Fred. The motors didn't warm. Come on. Gary Porter says, let's have at it. Fred Schaefer is ready. Green light, showtime. Side by side, they're off the line. Barefoot with a slight lead. They're going into the turn. The world champion has to hold on because he has got Gary Porter right on his tail. Candy screams for her fiance, Fred Schaefer, aboard Barefoot. She knows how important these points are. And Barefoot is, in fact, building the lead. A very close race as Carolina Crusher battles to catch up. Crusher and Barefoot in the finals. Fred Schaefer and Carolina Crusher coming home. Over the finish line, it's Barefoot. Barefoot wins it. The margin of victory, one-tenth of a second. An incredible win for Barefoot here in Louisville. Barefoot, the winner in Louisville, but it was not easy for Fred Schaefer. Carolina Crusher gave him a run for his money. In fact, it looked as though Crusher may have had him on the finish, but then Barefoot sails across the finish line one-tenth of a second quicker. And with that win, he overtakes Gravedigger as number one in points. Fred Schaefer is with Jim Davidson. Fred, Kathy, a great job in that run, Fred. Thank you very much. It went real smooth. Tell me about it. Well, it was a real close race. I kept looking there and seeing him out of my corner there in that last turn, and I knew that uh, he was lifting on two wheels, and I had to go for it anyway, and I just pushed it to the floor. Congratulations. Thank you very much. For third. Action continues with the Equalizer Barefoot matchup. Equalizer hasn't answered the bell, and Fred Schaefer's upset. Hey, you're supposed to put Morris on in three minutes. Huh? Three minutes he's got. That's what they're giving him. Okay, minutes. thank you. Word from the pits is that Equalizer's been having oil pressure problems, but he does answer the call, and we will have a Chevy Dodge matchup. Barefoot and Equalizer. Barefoot with Fred Schaefer qualified sixth, the world champion doing it in 5.92 seconds. Second fastest qualifying time went to David Morris and Equalizer at 5.69. And now they're side by side. Equalizer definitely the underdog with those oil pressure problems. And on the start, he's given the world champ a run for his money, but he can't do it. Barefoot.
foot, wheelies between the cars. What an incredible run for the world champion Barefoot Dodge. The power behind this Keith Black Cami, 1,500 horses. Any wonder that these monsters, capable of 100 miles an hour, are doing 60 to 65 miles in less than 200 feet? Jim Davidson's with the winner, Fred Schaefer. Fred, we know you got plenty of horsepower for this straight line course, but you got lots of bite off the line. Yeah, it's uh, my lightning reflexes and my skilled driver's training that got me through that round. Obviously, baby, you were sticking to the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It's really sticky out there, and you can see by the side of this truck how muddy it is out there. Today, the today, coming to you from where the air is clean and the track is very, very muddy and dirty. Pueblo, Colorado. Barefoot goes against Invader. Barefoot, the world champion, weighing in at slightly more than 10,000 pounds, 1,500 horsepower. And Invader, 11,000 pounds, a full thousand pounds heavier with 1,300 horsepower. Ray Perkowski aboard. Both trucks up to the line. Barefoot, Invader. And a Monster Wars exclusive. We're going to take you inside the cab of Barefoot, the green light. Fred Schaefer takes a bouncing on the straightaway and now up in the air and across the finish line. Barefoot wins it over Invader by a full half second. From outside the truck now, you can see they were even on the start. And now on the straightaway, Barefoot starts to pull away. One, two truck length lead at the finish line. Your winner, Barefoot. Two truck length lead, Jim Davidson with the world champ. Fred, how dangerous is it out there tonight? Well, I guess most of the track's slick, and besides that, you can't hardly see where you're going. There's so much mud all over the truck, I can't even hardly see out the windshield, but yeah, I'd say it's pretty dangerous. How about the ramps before the second set of cars? We're getting a lot of air down here. I jammed my window right then, it landed so hard, then I jammed the window on the truck. Is it getting scary up there? Uh, a lot of hang time. You don't, It just seems like you're up there for 10 minutes. You don't know when you're coming down. Welcome back to Monster Wars. And the semis are here. Barefoot goes against Equalizer. And just in case you're wondering, no, during the break, Equalizer did not borrow oil from Barefoot. Equalizer with David Morris aboard. Turned in an average time of 5.91 on this track. Barefoot, average time of 5.64. If he can keep that average, he wins it. Look at the age difference here, though. 26 for Morris, 45 for Schaefer. Thumbs up and thumbs up. It's race time. Equalizer with a hole shot. Barefoot, yes, Barefoot does it. Barefoot found what it took and takes out Equalizer two tenths of a second ahead on the finish line. Barefoot replaced Equalizer as a world champion two years ago and has held on to that lead ever since. Muddy high flying action for the Monsters. Barefoot, he was first across the finish line. He's in the finals. The action continues. Who will face Barefoot Foot. in the finals? One We're about to mile fly. high. Carolina Crusher in Pueblo, Colorado is already at the starting line. Here comes this competition, Barefoot. These two trucks have met six times this year. Three wins for Barefoot, three for Crusher. Barefoot defeated Equalizer, Invader, and Equalizer again as the fastest final. Carolina Crusher had to go against Kodiak in round one and two and took out Predator in round three. But now it's finals time. No hole. Barred. One becomes the victor. Fred Schaefer tries to dig in and get a little bit of traction in that barefoot lane. Carolina Crusher is already there. Fred Schaefer up in the cockpit. It is showtime. The finals on the start. They are tread to tread. And now Carolina Crusher comes from behind. In almost a photo finish. In almost a photo finish. Carolina Crusher inches out the world champion. And the picture tells the tale. Over the finish line, a half a truck length lead for Gary Porter. A disappointment for Barefoot. Jim Davidson standing by with our we winner, Carolina one. Crusher. Round number one, race number five, a very, very important one because remember, all five winners get to come back, but also the top three losers get to come back for round number two. So it's a very, very important one right here for both these trucks. The Kodiak, Mark Bendler, out of Eagle, Wisconsin. He qualified seventh, going against the world champion, Fred Schaefer, and Barefoot qualifying second. Fred Schaefer, the veteran in the field. 
and he is lined up and set against Kodiak. There they go. Now it's turn on time. Bendler suffers the bounce bounce, but Barefoot moves on and gets the win. Look at the time, 5.04 for Barefoot. What a ride on the front of Barefoot. The monster takes to the second set of cars. We're flying through the air and what a landing. Fred Schaefer's Barefoot truck. Lots of power, lots of suspension, and a lot of travel. You can see it as it bottoms and then bounces up and straightens up almost immediately. And this is what happened to Kodiak. He doesn't have that travel in the suspension. He bouncy bounces, tries to line up, get some power, but the bounce suffers again. A lot of problems on the finish line. So the good air that Kodiak got didn't help him at all as Kodiak goes back to the showers for the night and Jim Davidson stands by with the winner of the pits, Fred Schaefer. Fred, you just buried Kodiak. Tell me about the run. Uh, track conditions are real good. Try to get over the first set of cars and get on the ground. Let that big dodge do all the work. I know it's when we're flying through the air that uh, landed real hard on the front left wheel and uh, looks like it tweaked the sway bar a little bit. You know, today you're getting lots of air and you're keeping the nose up, generating a lot of power, huh? A lot of power between the cars. Uh, air's real good out there and motor's running just a tad Our lean. fourth and final race of round number two. One of these trucks goes to the semifinals, one goes to the shower. The Barefoot Dodge. Fred Schaefer out of Pontoon Beach, Illinois, the world champion, facing the Kodiak truck. Mark Bendler's truck from Eagle, Wisconsin. Kodiak and Barefoot ready to go at it with one going to the semi. Mark Bendler is staged. They bring Barefoot up, wait for the green light, and then it's showtime at the Colorado State Fairground. Barefoot with a great hole shot. He powers out and takes the win easily. Mark Bendler's Kodiak could not keep up with Barefoot. It was as simple as that. He was out horsepowered. One has to wonder if the altitude we talked about earlier had anything to do with the problem that Mark Bendler seems to be having with Kodiak here. There just doesn't seem to be any power at all there. And this altitude definitely takes its toll on power in those big engines. He can just barely get enough power up to sail across the car. But it's already too late. The win for the big barefoot world champion, Fred Schaefer. What a great running truck. Up and over. He is the world champion because he has the right combination of equipment and concentration. And of course, skill. He's been driving a long, long time. So our semifinal action will pit the world champion, Barefoot Dodge, now who's going to face Digger in the finals? Will it be Predator, Alan Pizzo's truck, his average time, 5.54 seconds, or the world champion, Barefoot, averaging 5.66 on this Colorado track? Predator and Barefoot, one goes to the finals, one goes back in the pits and waits till next week to see what he can do. The trucks are staged for semi-final action. It's Predator and Barefoot. There they go. Predator actually has a hole shot. Barefoot powers up, and there's no doubt about it. Barefoot's going to the finals. He's going to face the Grave Digger. Fred Schaefer was a little slow on the start, and that's very, very unusual for him. But it's what happens at the finish line. And look at this. He's so high, it's the rear tires that the camera picks up. Predator had the lead at the beginning, but he didn't have the horsepower to keep up with the world champion Barefoot. Predator falls down, can't get up again, and Barefoot sails up over the cars and into our final. This could be the matchup of the century. Now, Digger is already back in the pit, cooling down. Fred Schaefer has Barefoot back there. His fiance Kathy is working on the truck. Boy, tensions are running high back in the pits. They're sort of playing some mind games back there now to see who's going to be the first to go out for this final race. Hey, why does the dinner go? Why does Fred not have to get Just have him start and he'll go. And we'll be back with the incredible Grave Digger Barefoot matchup right after it. Treated to one of the most incredible nights of monster truck racing ever. And it's all come down to this. Grave Digger Dennis Anderson going against the world champion, Fred Schaefer Barefoot.
Fred Schaefer's fiance Kathy has got to be the most excited person here. I know that's hard to believe, but she's bouncing around back in the pit, pacing back and forth as she watches Fred. We are set now, waiting for the green light. Both trucks come up, edge their way up. Barefoot got here by defeating Kodiak in rounds one and two and taking out the Predator in the semi. How did the digger make it? It wasn't easy. First, he had to defeat the Invader. Then, Carolina Crusher in that questionable call. And finally, in the semis, he took out David Morris and the Equalizer. Up in the truck, Dennis Anderson looks over at Barefoot. We got a pin old baby for all she's worth. I got to take off, light the motor, get over this first hump, try to keep those back wheels down, and just god darn nail it, man. Did y'all get all that? Here we go. Green light, go. Dennis Anderson looked like he almost red lighted. And it doesn't make any difference because Barefoot finds the horsepower to take out the Grave Digger. <laughs> Kathy picked up on the red light. She doesn't care because she heard that Barefoot won it. Dennis Anderson had all that going through his mind, and he red lights right here. You see the tires move. That's a red light. Fred Schaefer just nails it. He says, I'm not going to back off. He saw Dennis move, but he waited for the green light, and that's why the world champion is winning today. What a great day for Gravedigger. He almost went the entire distance for the second week in a row. But this red light right on the starting line cost him the win. But the digger will be back. Don't count him out. Next week, another week and another. It's very simple. It's called Monster Truck Racing, and the first one across the finish line is our winner. Tonight, that winner was Fred Schaefer's Barefoot. Jim Davidson is standing by with Fred right now. Fred Schaefer, congratulations, my friend. You just put Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger away in the finals here at Pueblo. Thank you, Jim. Another notch in your belt. Tell me about that final matchup against him. Well, I know Dennis is one of the hardest runners out there, so uh, what I tried to do is get off the line with him and get down on the ground and uh, step back in the seat let that big Dodge motor take over from there and, and try and get to the finish line. The Monster Wars today, and there's a Barefoot fan. Fred Schaefer and Barefoot, every win very important to him. He has a 17-point lead over Gravedigger in our World Points competition. But Alan Pizzo aboard Predator says, uh-uh, not today, big boy, because today I want the win. On of round number one, the matchup between Predator and Barefoot. Alan Pizzo took Predator to sixth in qualifying today, picked up four points for that effort. Ten points went to Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. The fastest qualifying time of the day, 5.06 for the world champ. And our cam inside Predator. As you shadow what these monster drivers see when they look outside. Predator was caught napping on that one. The green light and barefoots across the finish line first. A quick time of 5.37 seconds. Predator waves to the crowd, but he's going to have to hope he can come. Barefoot got a hole shot and then picked up speed in no man's land. And Predator, he just couldn't catch up. The margin of victory, a full truck lane. Fred Schaefer standing by with her own Jim Davidson in the pit. Fred, you're blowing doors out there today at the fastest qualifying time. Then you go up against Predator and put him away. Tell me about it. Uh, we were staging there and uh, it looked like he, he tried to red light on me or tried to get the jump on me there. Got me a little shuck up. I did a few things wrong there, but uh, uh, in between the cars, I was worried about the truck spinning and coming down spinning and breaking, but I got through it okay and I'm ready for next round. Everything dialed in? Everything's ready. I'm ready. Barefoot comes up to the line. The world champion, Fred Schaefer. His matchup against Alan Pizzo aboard the Predator. That race when Monster Wars continues. Alan Pizzo aboard Predator has sworn to take out the world champion. Weighing in at a little over 10,000 pounds with 1,800 big horses, Chevrolet powered his Predator. The Keith Black Hemi powered Dodge Barefoot, the world champion with Fred Schaefer aboard, is his competition. And now they both ease up to the line. Wait for the green light. We go aboard Predator. On the start, over the cars. And Predator pops a wheelie, but he can't do it. Barefoot gets, I don't know where he gets his, his horsepower. He actually seems to go faster in midair. 
and Alan Pizzo is disappointed for the sixth time this year. He just can't beat Fred Schaefer. Approaching the finish line, it was all Predator, and then Barefoot comes from behind. Fred Schaefer has patented this. In no man's land, he gets some speed up, and then right before he approaches the last ramp, he mashes the engine. It's him a lot faster over the finish line. Predator, it just is not his day when he comes up against Barefoot. And go past the world champion, Fred Schaefer, in the Barefoot Dodge. Both trucks, no strangers to this track here in Pueblo. Fred Schaefer aboard Barefoot, checks to make sure everything's all right. Equalizer driven by David Morris. The average time, 5.14 seconds on this track to Barefoot's 5.36 seconds. Equalizer quite a bit faster than Barefoot so far today. And the question on everybody's mind is, can Barefoot defeat Equalizer? They come to the line, Equalizer and Barefoot. Chevy against Dodge, the world champion against the former world champion. And Morris would love to have that title back. Wait for the green light, they rev up. A whole shot for Barefoot. He pops a wheelie in no man's land. A wheelie down the track for Barefoot and he wins it. An incredible run for the world champion. And David Morris just didn't have a prayer. Dodge took it down the track. Your winner Barefoot with a wheelie. Watch this, he powers up. And the front tires never touch the dirt till the finish line. That's not racing, that's flying for Barefoot. From the front, let's see what a wheelie looks like. Nothing but clear Colorado sky. And Equalizer is out for the day. They pull up to the starting line, Barefoot and Gravedigger, two great trucks. How did they get here today? Well, it was not an easy road to hoe. Gravedigger took out Kodiak, Tropical Thunder, and then Carolina Crusher. Barefoot had to race Predator in round one and two and finally defeated Equalizer in our third round. And now the world champion, Fred Schaefer, goes against the Gravedigger. Never before has Gravedigger had a world championship. He wants it in 1993. And the man that stands in his way is Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. On the start, both trucks look strong. Barefoot wins it! Barefoot wins it! Incredible race for Barefoot. Where he gets the power of this big dodge, I don't know. But he just defeated Gravedigger handily here in Pueblo, Colorado. And a very dejected Gravedigger goes to the pits. Barefoot's win puts him ever closer to another world championship. The margin of victory, half a truck lane for Barefoot. On the start, Barefoot with a slight hole shot. He gets in no man's land, then it's goodbye, Digger. Here comes our winner, Fred Schaefer in Barefoot. Fred, man. Fred, Kathy. Fred, a great job. Tell me about that run against Digger, though. Well, you know how hard Digger's running? Because all I did is I got over that hill and I pushed that thing to the floor and let that big Dodge motor do all the work. I just held it down, straight crooked, it don't make no difference. I just held it to the floor and see how it comes out. That's what I did. Well, you know what these folks don't get to see is the games you play back in the pit. You never start that thing up until you see Digger on his way out to the track. That's right. We're running dry block here, and it's overheating a little bit, and we have to, you know, take every precaution we can. All right, man. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Kathy, congratulations. Another crucial win for Barry.
a view that even the drivers don't see. This camera is mounted on the front of Barefoot. Their stage, look for the green light, it's gone! Showtime! Barefoot, Invader, and Barefoot just opens up the lead! Barefoot was across the finish line before Invader even hit the second set of cars. Barefoot takes out Invader in round Our number one. Matchup. It's two great monster trucks, guys that are veterans of the sport and know what it's all about. We're talking, of course, about David Morris, the equalizer out of Springfield, Tennessee, and the world champion, Brent Schaefer's Barefoot from Pontoon Beach, Illinois. Brent qualified first with a time of seven seconds. Brent Schaefer, the granddaddy of them all. He started one of the original monster trucks and has been running them since the mid-70s. And now we're set, equalizer and barefoot. And this is what they have to maneuver. Watch the green light up in the upper right-hand corner for the start. And there we go. Riding in the front of barefoot. Side by side, barefoot has some problems. And barefoot... 7.18 to equalizer 7.50, but did he stay on the court? Let's look. He must keep both tires over the cars at all times on the approach. I'm not sure he did it there. I'm not sure that Fred Schaefer, no, he didn't. When he approached that first ramp, he did not do it. Second set of cars, first ramp, Fred Schaefer's all over the place. The tire was not on the cars. They're going to call that a minor infraction. The United States Top Rod Association has ruled that a minor infraction. Fred Schaefer loses it, and this is where it happens. Look, he goes off to the side. The tire's not on the ramp. He straightens up here, but it's too late. He must have approached that ramp with both tires over the cars. Equalizer, he had a great run. Not as bad as barefoot. But David Morris was able to keep it on the track. You can see it right there. So equalizer, can you at home? Strap yourself in for round number two. The two trucks staged right now, barefoot and equalizer. Let's see what makes them tick. The barefoot Dodge, the world champion, is powered by a Keith Black Hemi Dodge, putting out 1,500 horsepower. The Chevy Equalizer. Powered by 1,200 plus horses, he's about 150 pounds heavier. It's not going to be horsepower that wins it for Equalizer. It's going to be driving skill. That's what it's all about here. The trucks are staged for race number one of round number two. Barefoot and Equalizer, green lights, there they go. Barefoot has problems from the very start, and Equalizer opens up and goes for the win. But what happened to the world champion? Look at this, he's still running the race. 8.49 for Equalizer, 10.66 for Barefoot. Fred Schaefer has all sorts of problems. Maybe it was the mind game from the earlier infraction. Maybe he wanted to make sure he stayed on the track. Maybe it was a power problem. I don't know what was going on, but definitely Barefoot did not have things ready and dialed in for this matchup with the Equalizer. He not only didn't get any air, he's crawling over the cars. And David Morris gets the first win of the night in that very tough left-hand lane. He's down to the pit. Here at Jim Lennon Valley Raceway in New York. Equalizer and Barefoot are lined up. In the middle, when the light turns green, it's showtime. Inside Equalizer, David Morris gives a thumbs up. The start. Equalizer with a fan hop in that outside lane. Barefoot is there. Barefoot, a decided victory over Equalizer. And the curse of the outside lane gets another one. David Morris Foot. can't believe And this is a matchup because we have the new guy and the veteran. The rookie and the veteran going to go at it side by side. The rookie is Paul Schaefer in Monster Patrol. He qualifies six. The veteran is the world champion. Fred Schaefer, Barefoot, fastest in qualifying. He turned in a time of 6.82. To the starting line, Monster Patrol seemed to bobble a little bit. Apparently, he didn't break the beam. It's a legal race, but he takes another bad hop. It's all barefoot. It is all barefoot. Almost a full second over Monster Patrol. On the starting line, Paul Schaefer was a little shook. He came up, bobbles just a little bit, and then starts. But he did not break the beam, and that kept it a legal run. Meanwhile, barefoot went the whole way. There's that bobble. And then, over the cars, watch the jump. Ouch! 
bad hop. This is what everybody in that right-hand lane has been doing. That wasn't a monster patrol problem. That's a track problem. The right-hand lane's the one to stay out of tonight. Barefoot, a flawless run. Fred Schaefer right on the money as he approaches the cars. And now, pedal to the metal. He's in the winner's circle. Monsters in Lebanon Valley as the two next monster competitors come up. In the right-hand lane, Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. They'll go against Barefoot. Carolina Crusher is weighing in at 10,000 pounds, puts out 1,400 horses. Let's hope that suspension can hold up to the right-hand lane. Barefoot, 10,050 pounds, 1,500 horses. He has a Keith Black Hemi aboard. That Hemi has really been developing some horsepower and taking Barefoot home in these races. Carolina Crusher, Barefoot, line up in stage. Wait for the green light. There it goes. Carolina Crusher in the lead, and here comes Barefoot! Barefoot develops tons of horsepower in that short 140-foot straightaway. He defeats Carolina Crusher. Carolina Crusher almost broke that right lane jinx. He just didn't have it tonight. Reaction time was good for Carolina Crusher. I think if he was running any other truck, he would have won this race. But Fred Schaefer's Hemi can develop so much horsepower, he just had more power in that straightaway. Barefoot is your winner. The margin of victory, half a truck length. Jim Davidson is with your winner, Barefoot, and driver Fred Schaefer. Hey, Fred, I know they referred to you as an old man. Were you napping at the line there? Uh, I might have been, Jim. Uh, trying to go a little easier with that first set and not get too much air. Carolina Crusher had a big lead on you coming over the first set of cars, but he did just that, got too much air, and you overpowered him and blew him away in the long straight. I think you're right, Jim. That's what happens. Uh, you get too much hang time. I mean, I've done it before. You get excited to race. You get in that throttle too much, and it messes you up. What's running through your head when you're sitting at the line, waiting for that green light to hit, and you can hammer it? Boy, you, you want to just push that gas pedal down real bad, but you know if you do, you're going to be hanging up there in the air, and you're not going to be going anywhere. You're going to be spinning your tires in the Lord. air. And this matchup pits Predator and Alan Pizzo against Barefoot and Fred Schaefer. Alan Pizzo is young, 25 years old. He owns and drives his own monster truck. He goes up against longtime veteran Fred Schaefer, 20 years his senior, out of Pontoon Beach, Illinois, and one of the original monster truck owners and drivers. Predator and Barefoot. Let's get the war going. Let's let it begin. Inside Predator, Alan shifts in gear, waits for the green light. On the start, they're evenly matched. Fred Schaefer takes a bad hop, but he turns it on. He regained control, and Barefoot wins it. At the start, these trucks were evenly matched. And despite the fact that Barefoot took a bad hop, he was able to get down and generate enough horsepower with that heavy engine to take out Predator. As he comes back into the pits, he waves to the crowd. A very disappointed Predator. It's time for the Monster Final. It's come down to Taurus and Barefoot. And Taurus gets the right-hand lane. Fred Schaefer up aboard Barefoot. How did he get here? He took out Monster Patrol in round number one, then Carolina Crusher and Predator in the semis. Taurus defeated UFO, Invader, and finally Gravedigger in the semis. And now it's just these two, Taurus and Barefoot. One's going to come out, the champion at Lebanon Valley Raceway. A thumbs up, and we're ready to go. Taurus and Barefoot evenly matched. Going to the straightaway now. Barefoot has to play catch up, and he does it. Barefoot, what a come from behind victory. One tenth of a second, the margin of victory for Barefoot. Not even with a truck length lead going into the straightaway could Taurus defeat anybody when he's stuck in that right-hand lane. Barefoot wins it. And Taurus, well, a tough break for him. He'll have to wait to win another. Fred Schaefer's Barefoot pulls to the winner's circle. Getting here, it was not very pretty. Taurus actually had a better looking run, but Fred Schaefer went just a little bit faster, took advantage of a bad bobble that Taurus took in that right-hand lane. Off the line, Taurus looks good, comes over the cars, takes a bad hop here. That's the hop that's been knocking everybody out of the winner's circle in that right-hand lane. 
is Ben Torres right there. Fred Schaefer off the line, looks fine. And then he approaches the car to watch what happens to him. He goes a little sideways and has to correct it. Now let's go to the winner's circle where Jim Davidson is with Fred Schaefer. Fred, unbelievable run. What's going through your mind? Well, Jim, uh, I was a little worried about the run. Uh, he's been running real hard tonight. And I uh, just try to do everything right there and uh, get that thing in gear and let that big Dodge motor take over. And uh, I'd like to thank Dodge for that competitive edge. Fred, we're talking barefoot and Taurus in the finals. This goes way back, not just here at Lebanon Valley. Yeah, you're right, Jim. Uh, about 25 years back, matter of fact. I know this one is sweet, so you take me through the run. Uh, obviously, I want to come off the light and go easy on the first set, get on the ground, get over the second set, get that thing in third gear and let that torque take over. That big Dodge motor took over in third gear, and that's what made the difference, Jim. Fred, congratulations. Absolutely an incredible victory here at Lebanon Valley. Thank you very much. Fred Schaefer needed a big win today to tighten up the Monster Wars season standing and win big he did. The finals bring us down to four. And what four they are. Our matchup now between Gravedigger and Barefoot. Gravedigger is piloted by the 31-year-old Dennis Anderson. Fred Schaefer, pilot of Barefoot, is 14 years Dennis's senior. He's the older and the more experienced of the two. All right, Tom's got it staged up. We're going for one hell of a ride right now. Anderson is ready in Gravedigger. Barefoot is ready. The green light, they go. Barefoot with the Dodge Hemi has more horsepower than Gravedigger. He's going to need it here. Barefoot gets him. Nine hundredths of a second, but he gets him. All right. I don't think we got him, but I'll tell you what, we gave him a hell of a try. The margin of victory was close, very close, less than a tire length. Both drivers, very experienced, both drivers wanted it badly, but the outside lane was cursed, and Barefoot took advantage of that. Fred, congratulations, a big run against Dennis Anderson in the Grave Digger. Boy, Jim, I couldn't tell for sure, but it looked pretty close down there. I know, uh... Boy, it seemed like the reaction time between those cars and no sooner hit the ground, man, and you're just, you're there. Fred, I'm watching that run. You're going to have to take me through it because over that last set of cars, you got awfully sideways. I thought you were going to lose it at the end. Yeah, uh, I thought that too, Jim. Uh, everything happened so quick. Uh, you got to get back in the throttle real quick. You can't leave any time for Dennis Anderson. A split second makes a difference. I got back in the throttle, hit the cars, got a little off to the side. The truck was flying sideways. I had my hands pulled down the other end. I thought I was going over, but uh, this truck handled so good that mid-engine weights down low and drove right out so barefoot preparations in barefoot and he really had a struggle to get here to our finals today he defeated invader equalizer and then took out grave digger predator had no cakewalk either he had to take out equalizer monster patrol and then taurus but throw all that out this is our final predator and barefoot one's gonna go to the winner's circle it could be predator's first win of the season they wait for the green light both trucks are staged. Inside, Alan Pizzo appearing very, very calm as he eyeballs Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. The green light and a go. A puff of smoke and a predator. He's in the outside lane. Has cursed everybody so far today. But no, not Predator. Not Predator. He gets the win over Barefoot. And he does it in the outside lane. If it had been a horse race, Predator would have been a 100 to 1 shot. First of all, he's underpowered. Secondly, he's in the outside lane. And that puff of smoke on the start, I thought he blew an engine. Where he found the horsepower to beat Barefoot, I don't know. But the video tells the tale. Predator, your winner at Lebanon Valley. Digger to beat Barefoot on a straight line course. We're about to find out. Dennis Anderson aboard the Grave Digger qualified sixth today. But Fred Schaefer took Barefoot to first in qualifying. These two trucks have met seven times this season. Grave Digger has only been victorious once. Dennis Anderson knew he'd probably have to meet Barefoot this year, but did he think it would happen in the first round? All right. God dog. I didn't want to meet up the old big red Dodge first thing, but hey, man, I got to turn this old panel truck loose, go a blow, make it or break it. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Make it or break it. On the start, Grave Digger pops a wheelie. Grave Digger gets a whole shot on the world champion. Dennis Anderson defeats Barefoot. The Grave Digger wins. 
The Big Dodge can't believe he lost as he leaves the track. On the starting line, Dennis Anderson, very, very quick on the line. He pops a wheelie, and it's all Gravedigger from there on out. Matter of fact, he may have been too quick on the line. It seems as though there's a bit of a controversy, and Dennis Anderson, who's been known to do it before, may have red-lighted. He's with Jim Davidson. Now the fans are getting the news. There are a few Barefoot fans. And with that win that romped down the track, Barefoot is officially the U.S. Hot Rod Association world champion. My friend, you're tearing it up all year long, and you got the Monster Wars championship. Thanks, Jim. It's a great feeling. I, I didn't have any idea what was going on out there. Kathy, you're back here in the pits. You've been behind him all year long. How do you feel? Great, great. Fred, you're up against Dennis Anderson. I know it's round one, but you knew what was riding on the line there. Did you have any idea you red-lighted? No, I didn't. I, I knew I had to wait on the light. I couldn't afford a DQ this late in the game, so I had to wait on the green light. And I knew he left before I did, but I didn't have any idea he red-lighted. When you got back here in the pits, you had thought you actually lost that race, didn't you? I, I sure did, Jim. I didn't know what was going on there. And, and like I said, I did wait on the light, and I was worried about red-lighting because I didn't want to get DQ'd. I didn't have any idea he red-lighted. I thought I lost the race. The ride that made him the only three-time world champion, Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. Round two of Monster Wars when we and come now, back. now the two monsters come up round number two and only winning counts in round number two. Fred Schaefer already won the world championship aboard Barefoot. He'd love to get a win now against Predator. 1,500 horsepower, the Keith Black Hemi Dodge, his power plant. Predator, 10,010 pounds, Chevy-powered, 1,800 horses. That is, in fact, 300 more than Barefoot. Dodge against Chevy for this matchup. And inside the cab of Barefoot. Fred Schaefer takes us for a ride. Predator gets the whole shot. But again, again, the world champion comes from behind, as we've seen him do so many times this year. Barefoot gets the win. An incredible feat of driving for the world champ. Meanwhile, Predator is smoking. He waits to be towed to the pits. A tough break for Predator. The two trucks in the semifinals, Barefoot and Equalizer, have raced all year long. Nine times they've met. Barefoot's been victorious, six of those. Equalizer, David Morris, average time, 4.28 seconds on this track. Fred Schaefer's taken Barefoot to an average time of 4.36. Equalizer actually faster. On the start, Equalizer with a hole shot. Can Barefoot catch up? Yes, just barely. Just barely barefoot by three hundredths of a second defeats Equalizer. An incredible win for the world champion, Barefoot Dodge. The picture on the finish line tells the tale. Barefoot, your winner. Jim Davidson is in the barefoot camp with Fred Schaefer. Fred, you're out there tearing it up. You just put Equalizer away in the semis, but you had to come back to do it. But there's some mind games going on, on out there on the line. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I, I really didn't know I wanted the race was so close. Uh, they gave me a thumbs up on the way out the door. I really didn't know. I know it was a real close race. Kathy's here to say congratulations to my friend. You are one step away from getting the win here in Pontiac. Yeah, thanks, Jim. The end of the season and a world championship for Fred Schaefer already wrapped up. But now, the old-timer, Fred Schaefer, one of the creators of this sport, has to go against the newcomer. Paul Schaefer, no relation, in the incredible Monster Patrol. Monster Patrol got to the finals by taking out Predator, Tropical Thunder, and Carolina Crusher. Barefoot, he took out Gravedigger early on, then Predator and Equalizer. And now the two line up, the rookie and the old-timer, Barefoot and Monster Patrol. Nobody in their right mind would dare not sit still and watch this race, because this is what monster truck racing is all about. Can the rookie take out the world champion? On the start, it is Monster Patrol with the whole shot. Barefoot fights. He can't do it. He can't do it. An incredible season for Monster Patrol. He just defeated the world champion. The truck designed by Jack Wilman Sr., the driver of the world mud racing champion, has just taken out the world monster racing champion. And when this guy comes back for the 1994 season, look out, Fred Schaefer, Paul's on your tail. The Barefoot Dodge had a good run. You can't take that away from him. But this time, Dodge fell to the Chevy Monster Patrol.
Fred Schaefer won a world championship here today, but he did not win this race. That goes to Paul Schaefer, who's standing by with Jim Davidson.